System 1 System 1 was Apple's first operating system for the Macintosh, released in 1984. So it was created because Steve Jobs wanted computers to be simple enough for regular people to use, not just programmers and tech experts. Unlike other computers at that time that required typing complex commands, System 1 introduced a graphical user interface with icons, windows, and a mouse pointer. This made it revolutionary because users could simply point and click instead of memorizing command prompts. What made System 1 stand out was its simplicity and ease of use. The entire operating system fit on a single 400 KB floppy disk, and it introduced concepts like dragging files and clicking icons that we still use today. The Macintosh also came with a built-in screen and keyboard, making it one of the first all-in-one personal computers. However, System 1 had serious limitations. It could only run one program at a time, meaning you had to close one application before opening another. It also didn't have a trash can yet, so deleting files was permanent with no recovery option. The Macintosh only had 128 kilobytes of RAM, which made everything run slowly. But despite these limitations, System 1 laid the foundation for all future Mac operating systems. System 7 System 7 was released in 1991, and it's considered to be one of the most important upgrades in Mac history. So, it was developed to address the major limitations of earlier systems, particularly the inability to run multiple programs simultaneously. System 7 finally introduced cooperative multitasking, allowing users to run several applications at the same time. It also added the trash can feature where deleted files would stay until you emptied the trash. What made System 7 powerful was its networking capabilities and improved interface. It introduced file sharing over networks, making it easier for offices and schools to share documents. System 7 also supported virtual memory and featured colored icons with TrueType font support, making documents look more professional. However, System 7 had challenges. It was much heavier than previous versions, requiring more powerful hardware to run smoothly. Older Macs struggled with the new features and often felt sluggish. System 7 was also known for occasional crashes and freezes, especially when running too many applications. But despite these issues, System 7 remained popular throughout the early 1990s. Mac OS 8 Mac OS 8 was released in 1997 and brought a major visual redesign to the Mac operating system. So it was created during a critical time when Apple was struggling financially and needed to modernize its software. Mac OS 8 introduced the Platinum interface, which featured a three-dimensional look with shaded buttons and redesigned windows. It also added contextual menus, allowing users to right-click on files for quick options. What made Mac OS 8 stand out was its customization options. It introduced desktop themes that let users change colors and appearance. Mac OS 8 also improved internet connectivity with better web browsing and built-in email support. However, Mac OS 8 had stability problems. It would occasionally freeze or crash, especially with resource-intensive applications. Even though it looked more modern, Mac OS 8 was still built on the same foundation as previous versions, which limited its performance. But despite these problems, it kept Mac users satisfied. Mac OS 9 Mac OS 9 was released in 1999 as the final version of the classic Mac operating system before Apple's complete redesign. So, it was developed to be the most refined version of the classic Mac OS, with improved multitasking and better processor management. Mac OS 9 introduced Sherlock 2, a powerful search tool that could find files on your computer and search the internet. What made Mac OS 9 powerful was its new features. It added the software update tool, which automatically checked for updates from Apple. Mac OS 9 also introduced voice recognition through speakable items and supported multiple users with separate accounts. However, Mac OS 9 had major limitations. It was still based on outdated architecture, which meant crashes were common. The lack of protected memory meant one application crash could take down the entire system. So yeah, these limitations made it clear that Apple needed something completely new. Mac OS X Cheetah Mac OS X Cheetah was released in 2001 as Apple's first completely new operating system built on Unix foundations. So it was created after Apple acquired Next, Steve Jobs' company, and represented a complete break from the classic Mac OS. Cheetah introduced the Aqua interface with colorful, glossy designs, translucent windows, 
and smooth animations. What made Cheetah revolutionary was its Unix foundation and modern architecture. It provided protected memory, meaning one application crash wouldn't take down the entire system. Cheetah also introduced preemptive multitasking, allowing better processor management between applications. However, Cheetah had serious problems at launch. It was extremely slow compared to Mac OS 9, especially on older hardware. Many professional applications weren't compatible yet, forcing users to boot into Mac OS 9. Cheetah also lacked features like DVD playback and CD burning that were already standard. Many users felt it was unfinished and buggy, but despite the rough start, Cheetah established the foundation for modern Mac OS. Mac OS X Leopard Mac OS X Leopard was released in 2007, and it's considered to be one of the most feature-packed Mac updates ever. So it was developed to showcase Apple's innovation with over 300 new features. Leopard introduced Time Machine, a revolutionary backup system that automatically saved file versions. It also added spaces, which allowed multiple virtual desktops for better task organization. What made Leopard powerful was its productivity features. The redesigned Finder included cover flow for visual file browsing, and Spotlight Search became faster. Leopard introduced Quick Look for previewing files without opening them, and Boot Camp for installing Windows on Macs. These features made Leopard incredibly versatile. However, Leopard had issues at launch. Many users reported bugs and compatibility problems with older software. Some complained that Leopard was slower than Tiger, especially on older Macs with limited RAM. The translucent menu bar was also controversial because it made text hard to read. But despite initial complaints, Leopard became one of the most beloved Mac OS X versions. Mac OS X Snow Leopard Mac OS X Snow Leopard was released in 2009 with a different philosophy from previous updates. So instead of adding flashy new features, Snow Leopard focused entirely on refinement, performance, and stability. Apple optimized the system code, resulting in faster boot times and better overall performance. It also freed up around 7 gigabytes of hard drive space. What made Snow Leopard stand out was its performance improvements and reliability. It introduced Grand Central Dispatch, which allowed better utilization of multi-core processors. Snow Leopard also improved power management for extended battery life and added better Microsoft Exchange support. Oh yeah, the Mac App Store was also introduced, simplifying app discovery and updates. However, Snow Leopard dropped support for older power PC Macs. But for supported Macs, Snow Leopard was incredibly stable and fast, which is why many users considered it one of the best Mac OS X versions ever. Some people continued using Snow Leopard for years because of its reliability. OS X Yosemite OS X Yosemite was released in 2014 and introduced a completely redesigned interface inspired by iOS. So Apple replaced the glossy look with a flat, minimalist design featuring translucent windows and vibrant colors. The goal was creating a unified experience across all Apple devices. Yosemite introduced continuity, allowing users to start tasks on one device and continue on another, including answering phone calls and text messages from the Mac. What made Yosemite powerful was its ecosystem integration. Handoff let users seamlessly switch between Mac, iPhone, and iPad while working. Yosemite improved Spotlight Search and introduced iCloud Drive for cloud storage. It also redesigned Safari with better performance. However, Yosemite had problems. Many users experienced Wi-Fi connectivity issues with random disconnections. Performance complaints were common especially on older hardware. Some users also disliked the flat design, but despite criticisms, Yosemite was a major step toward ecosystem unification. Mac OS Big Sur Mac OS Big Sur was released in 2020 and brought the biggest visual redesign since Mac OS X launched. So Apple completely overhauled the interface with rounded corners, colorful icons, and a spacious layout resembling iOS and iPadOS. Big Sur introduced Control Center, giving quick access to settings like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and brightness. What made Big Sur significant was its design changes and Apple Silicon support. The redesigned Safari featured improved performance with faster page loading. Big Sur enhanced privacy features with a privacy report. Most importantly, Big Sur introduced support for Apple Silicon Macs with M1 chips, 
bringing significant performance improvements and better battery life. However, Big Sur had serious issues. Many users reported installation problems, with some Macs experiencing failures during updates. Others complained the design felt too iOS-like. Performance issues were common on older Intel Macs with slower speeds and higher memory usage. But despite the rough launch, Big Sur marked a new era with Apple Silicon, macOS Ventura. macOS Ventura was released in 2022, focusing on productivity and collaboration improvements. So it introduced Stage Manager, which automatically organized open windows to reduce clutter. Ventura improved continuity with better Mac and iPhone integration, including using iPhones as webcams for video calls. What made Ventura useful was its productivity enhancements. Mail improvements included scheduled sending, undo send, and follow-up reminders. Safari gained shared tab groups for collaborative browsing. Ventura also introduced Freeform, a collaboration app for digital whiteboard brainstorming. However, Ventura faced criticism. Stage Manager was controversial because many found it confusing rather than helpful. Some felt Ventura was a minor update with fewer exciting features. Compatibility issues affected older Macs as Ventura dropped support for several Intel models. Mac OS Sequoia Mac OS Sequoia was released in 2024, continuing Apple's focus on user experience and artificial intelligence integration. So, Sequoia introduced Apple Intelligence with AI-powered features like smarter Siri responses, improved writing tools, and better photo organization. It enhanced window management with improved tiling options. What made Sequoia notable was its privacy and performance improvements. Enhanced privacy features included better Safari tracking prevention and more control over app data access. Sequoia improved performance on Apple Silicon Macs with faster app launches and better battery efficiency. However, Sequoia faced criticism. Some users felt AI features were overhyped and underperformed. Others found insufficient significant changes to justify updating. Compatibility issues with older professional software were concerns. But overall, Sequoia represented Apple's continued efforts toward smarter, faster, and more integrated macOS. macOS Tahoe macOS Tahoe was released in September 2025 as version 26, introducing Apple's biggest visual redesign in years. So it adopted the liquid glass design language, which features translucent materials that behave like real glass reflecting light and color dynamically. The menu bar became virtually invisible, making displays feel larger, while app icons, folders, the dock, and toolbars all received the transparent glass treatment. Tahoe also replaced Launchpad with a new applications interface that organizes apps by category, similar to the app library on iOS. What made Tahoe significant was its deep iPhone integration and customization options. It introduced a phone app for Mac that lets users make cellular calls through their nearby iPhone, with features like call screening and hold assist. The control center and menu bar became fully customizable. Tahoe also introduced folder customization with colors, emoji, and glyphs, plus new appearance themes beyond just light and dark modes. However, Tahoe faced criticism and limitations. It marked the final version of macOS to support Intel-based Macs with only the 2019 Mac Pro, 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro, and 2020 iMac models supported. Some users disliked the heavily iOS-inspired design, feeling it didn't fit the Mac's identity. The removal of Launchpad was controversial and the translucent menu bar required a toggle option for users who preferred the traditional look. But despite mixed reactions, Tahoe represented Apple's continued push toward unified design and tighter ecosystem integration across all devices. Bye kitties, and don't forget to subscribe for my poor cat. See you in the next one.